this presentation, we discuss topics of chemistry in the ocean. So just to give you a bit of uh, information regarding what the ocean contributes to our world and our Earth, it comprises 50% of the Earth's primary productivity. It also contributes anywhere between 50 and 85% of the oxygen that we have on Earth in order to utilize. Uh, now, the 50 to 85, I realize, is, is quite a range, but that has to do with uh, variability in terms of the um, in terms of when the percentage was reported, as well as different resources having different estimates. Finally, greater than 50% or more of carbon dioxide that is in our atmosphere is held or kind of captured by oceans. The biogeochemical cycle refers to all of the movement of elements and compounds among the land or the lithosphere, organisms, the air or the atmosphere, and the oceans or the hydrosphere. So we oftentimes talk about uh, biogeochemical kind of properties or chemical properties in, in reference to these, these different elements because of the fact that they are all linked and because there's a movement of materials between all of them. The elements oftentimes will travel among the air, land, and sea through physical processes. And um, as, they, as they kind of get incorporated into their new environments, um, the, for instance, the elements um, will be used by organisms in the ocean or organisms on land uh, who will then put nutrients back into the environment. So there's this kind of relationship, this cyclical relationship between the elements that are responsible or the el components of the earth that are responsible for uh, organisms being able to survive and the organisms kind of contributing back to the environment after the use of those certain elements and nutrients. Marine life really is dependent on several different elements, including carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, silicone, iron, and trace metals. Gases exist in both the air and in the ocean. However, in the ocean, they are typically dissolved in the water to a different extent than they are uh, than their contribution in the atmosphere. So the percentage of gases in seawater is based on the total gases dissolved in the seawater um, as, as opposed to the uh, percentage that comprises the atmosphere. So as you can see for nitrogen and oxygen, there's a significantly lower percentage dissolved in seawater as compared to what is making up the atmosphere, uh, specifically that oxygen level. Uh, really only seawater only constitutes or is comprised of 0.4 to 0.6 percent oxygen as opposed to 21 percent in our atmosphere. So obviously you can see why or you could probably guess why there need to be different adaptations in animals to be able to uh, work with such a low percentage in oxygen that, that is required for all marine living organisms. Uh, carbon dioxide, however, is has the flip side. There's a very small percentage uh, found in air, naturally, um, and a large percentage that is dissolved in seawater. Nitrogen is a limiting factor in the growth of phytoplankton, and therefore the entire food web. It also affects how much carbon dioxide can be pulled out of the atmosphere and sequestered in what we call a carbon cycle, a kind of a rotation of carbon between different elements of the ocean, different, different organisms as well as um, parts of the ocean. Um, only cyanobacteria are able to fix nitrogen in the ocean. So you have a real reliance there on an organism to be able to make it something that's usable by other organisms or fix it in the ocean. Phosphorus is a limiting nutrient in aquatic habitats. Uh, it occurs dissolved in the water mainly as phosphate, so it can be represented in a couple different molecules, uh, but this phosphate is the most common one. It's found in ocean sediment and in rock on land, and it's one of the slowest geochemical cycles, so it cycles through the, the ocean, land, and atmosphere at different, uh, different rates. Silicon is the second most abundant element, 
and uh, the limiting element for diatoms, which are an organism that are going to be limited in their population based on this particular substance. Upwelling tends to bring, and we'll talk about more of, that, more of that later, but upwelling tends to bring it up from the floor sediments, and it's more scarce in the surface water. Finally, carbon cycling is essentially where there's a transfer of carbon from the ocean surface to the deep ocean through the food chain. So for instance, a whale eats plankton at the surface, a whale poops, the poops goes down all the way to the bottom of the ocean, you've got this movement of, of carbon then happening. So that's just one of the ways in which it cycles. But the physical carbon pump is the movement in currents, upwelling and downwelling, um, which is responsible for the great conveyor belt or constitutes the great conveyor belt. Um, we also have, as I mentioned in my whale example, a biocarbon pump in a lot of these organisms. This is really important because uh, the fixing, it fixes, uh, or it's responsible for fixing carbon by photosynthetic plankton. It is necessary in order to continue that nitrogen or nutrient cycle. And uh, carbon tends to decompose or sink to the ocean floor via this process of downwelling. And then after it's been you know, down there for some time, typically, uh, it will remineralize and rejoin the primary productivity or pro primary production uh, aspect of this kind of pump through a process called upwelling, which is where deep waters get shifted into the upper kind of levels of the ocean. This is just kind of an example of a carbon pump <clears throat> in that you have plankton along the surface that are using carbon dioxide for uh, photosynthesis, it's going to, those organisms are going to give some CO2 back off through respiration into the environment, but as those phytoplankton die and decompose, that carbon they're made of is going to settle in the deep ocean. Um, additionally, there's going to be uh, other organisms that are going to ingest those different plankton, and those organisms will basically help to um, kind of keep that process of carbon moving along. So you've got these fish now that are going to eat the plankton and then go up closer to the surface and um, are, are representative of another method of pumping because they are going to then either decompose or, or uh, defecate or whatnot in order to move that carbon along. So you have different organisms along the way that are being responsible for the pumping of that carbon through the ocean. And that's just a little bit about chemistry in the ocean. For an overview on kind of chemistry basics, please check out the Chemistry 101 presentation.